I'm the UX designer at uh, ENS, and we are trying to make uh, everything easier for the users. Yeah. And so I'm uh, a bit of like doing all the social shit. Oh, sorry, apologies for the social media stuff. I organize the ENS Hackathon, and uh, you know, and also I do actually do a bit of dev work, doing especially for the DNS integration work. Uh, uh, Nick might have, you know, Nick explained. Next place. Yeah. So hold on. One before. So yeah, again, as I mentioned, it's two parts, like how to get you this cool ENS thing so that you can have the ultimate bragging right. Like, it only happened this year. Next year, we assume everybody has it, so it's not it, no longer the you know, novelty, but this year, you are the cool bunch. Congratulations. Then once, yeah, so too early. Okay, so, get, actually, who has no clue about ENS? Okay, so I don't have to bring Nick to the stage to go through the state of ENS again, right? So cool. So ENS stands for? Okay. <laughs> Guys, focus. <laughs> ENS stands for? <laughs> One more. ENS stands for? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you guys Ethereum okay. Ethereum name service. Yeah, Ethereum name service. Okay, so, so it's like, a, like ENS. Uh, like, you know, in case of, like, the comparison we make is a DNS, right? So, like, you, you have a DNS domain. We have also have an ENS domain. And also, we have a notion of uh, domain and subdomain. Uh, it's kind of maps into the, you know, the naming scheme of DNS as well. That, for example, this domain, matoken.is, this is my is. So, if you want to, you know, like, you want to just be a bit of send a bit of is, like, that's the address, matoken.is. But at the same time, uh, yeah, I will explain how to get this domain because that's probably people are very keen to. But I'll tell the result first. You can't get it today, and I'll explain why. So your focus of today will be going to get something like a subdomain, which is something like, for example, makoto.gitcoin.is. Uh, who does not have a uh, GitHub account? Who oh. does not have a GitHub account? Okay, so yeah, everybody right. could should be able to get that, Keep going. that kind of stuff. Oh, sorry, okay. sorry, sorry. Yeah, and next page, please. So the domain of, for the dot ETH address is I think Nick already mentioned the state of it. It's like a, we go through the how many days? Seven days. Seven day process. Yeah, seven days of auction process, which. Can you explain? The, the, the auction? Yeah. So the auction is very complicated, and uh, Nick said, uh, luckily, that uh, we are going to get rid. But today, to register, you it's a commit and reveal pattern. Who doesn't know what commit and reveal is? OK, so it it's one of those patterns where you are bidding on a domain, but uh, hidden. So your bid is hidden until you reveal it three days later. later, And so during the first three days, okay, the bidding period, 72 hours, anybody could bid on that name, okay? Your name is hidden. If it's a complicated name, nobody will ever know. But if it's a, it's a name that also has a .com or a, a, a famous TLD, it can be guessed. And so somebody else could be bidding on your domain. You are bidding different amounts, and uh, in the after three days, you have this reveal period in which you are you should reveal your bid, okay? And the winner will be the one with the highest bid, but he will only pay the second uh, highest uh, bid, so he will not pay the highest price he tried to bid. And this mechanism was made so that there are no squatters uh, who uh, collect uh, all the names while we are still uh, coming out with, uh, with ENS. And uh, an important limitation, today you can buy only uh, domains that are longer than seven characters, okay? And after the reveal period, so there is a time for 48 hours in which you should, you actually, you must submit your reveal, otherwise you lose the money. Uh, someone of the bidders wins, and after that, the winner should finalize the auction. Thank you very much. Next you one, is, is, it, is it free if there is only one bidder? Is it free? No, uh, minimum is 0 0.01. So, and also, it's a deposit, uh, yeah, you keep it locked. So, when you release it, you get the ether back. 
so it's not consumed. And the next one, please. But we'll try to go this one quick, blah, relatively quickly, because uh, again, Nick already mentioned that like, we are going to get rid of the uh, auction at some point. Uh, but like this is just for the, you know, brave people who don't mind going for the this process. And uh, yep. So again, uh, auction process is something we couldn't. Uh, we still haven't put into the new uh, ENS manager. So currently, there's a couple of options. One is go to the registrar.ens.domains uh, to go through it. Uh, there's a huge deprecation warning comes out, and uh, there might be a bit of bugs. So like again, for the brave heart. And also, some third party like my crypto, my Ether wallet, and uh, there might be a couple more. They do have some similar way of uh, auction process. So if you want to go that route, you can. Next, please. And uh, yeah, so. Is this like a similar thing you already kind of explained? Like, yeah, yes. during bidding process, it says like how many hours you left and all that stuff? The, yeah, this is the in, uh, interface of the new manager or part of it. We're still uh, working on it. And uh, this process uh, re uh, shows, for example, that this domain, Visa Debit Card, is inside of the bidding period. Uh, so anybody, even you, you could bid for, for this domain. This is a very complicated process. Everybody or almost everybody has had problems with this, lost money, forgot to reveal, uh, forgot to bid. Maybe they opened the auction, they didn't uh, bid. So it's a complicated new concept that a lot of people have made mistakes. So if you have problems, either come talk to us or follow through the instructions very well if you want to buy now. But Makoto is going to show a simpler version today. Okay. And this is the reveal period. Again, it, it moved from bidding to reveal. And, and uh, there's another way of getting so the DNS integration that like people kind of already associate ENS as .eth address, but that's not necessarily the case. That like uh, that's something like I've also worked with Nick uh, for the last six months. That like uh, basically if you own domains, uh, like for example, I have a matokun.xyz, and uh, if you can prove uh, you can you put the sub uh, domain record like underscore ENS dot matokun dot uh, XYZ and the uh, DNS you can put not just IP but you can put text record so if you put the Ethereum address and there's ways to kind of prove that uh, that's correct like anyone can do it and by doing that you can say send east to matokun XYZ uh, common mistake I had for the last couple of weeks is that like People ask a question like something like, uh, oh, so if I have matokun uh, dot x y z, so and then matokun dot com, who owns matokun dot is? But that's completely irrelevant. So the is uh, domain acquisition mechanism and the, this DNS related stuff is completely different one. So they they have different ownership. Uh, is that part clear? I guess ish. Okay. And uh, yeah, so once so this is an example of how you add in the text. Then once you add the text, so currently again this is temporary uh, patch. Uh, eventually, it's going to be in the ENS manager. But for the time being, uh, there's a two way, harder way and the easier way. The harder way is you. I know, uh, assuming you have a skill to manage your DNS record, you go to like you know uh, Google uh, Cloud DNS manager or something, and uh, you basically add your own. Uh, that record into the DNS record. And then once you come to this uh, DNS sec ENS dot, uh, domains, uh, we'll do a couple, of, uh, there's a wizard to go through whether you have done any setup up on by yourself, because these are things that we can't automate ourselves. And then like mm -hmm. once it's done, there's a uh, button to say submit the proof, which every, uh, anyone can press. And once it's pressed, it looks up the DNS record uh, chain relationship, construct the proof, and uh, put the hash of the proof to something called DNSSEC Oracle. DNSSEC Oracle verify that that's like uh, not tampered. And if it's correct one, uh, there's a registrar uh, which register uh, that e Ethereum address as a uh, ENS domain owner. And uh, yep, next please. Uh, if that's a bit too much, there's a, uh, another solution, something like easy DNS. They should be able to automate that you know, the second bits uh, 
from their uh, website. So that, uh, you, that's, that's something you went through, right? And, uh, so yeah, Easy DNS makes it very simple to register at XYZ domain. And uh, they have an interface in which you simply put an address and you decide in which network, Robston or Mainnet, you want to uh, claim this domain. And they do all the process for you. It takes some time, but at the end, you have your own domain claimed on DNS. The resolver is set, and even the address is pointed to uh, with automatically. And yeah, this is in the manager. After that, you have bought the domain. You see uh, domain e ENS names, for example, .xyz, who the owner is, and the resolver, and the address who that points it to. In this case, is the same address, and they do this automatically for you. So, so far, I explained the things you would be doing today because it takes too long. But then I'm going to talk about some other way you could do right now. As long as if you have a Wi-Fi connection and if you have a mobile wallet, well, MetaMask or mobile wallet, or if and you have a ETH, okay. And the one uh, there's a th there's actually quite a lot of way, but uh, uh, we'll, today we're gonna talk about uh, our own uh, now .ens domains and uh, Gitcoin is kind of third party integration and the status I forgot to take out the bracket, but like. Uh, that's another third party integration for the mobile solution. And so this is now ENS domains, uh, which again, we are going to incorporate into the ENS manager. Um, but uh, from here, what you can do is like uh, basically, if you t type your my fancy name, it's, it lists you the list of domain is which allows you to get their subdomain as. So like in this case, my fancy name at Leroy.is and this top and this is me.is. They for them they give you, you for free. But like you still have to pay for the gas. So like if you want to go for the cheaper one, uh, this could be the way. And then I think there's a certain domain name I shouldn't be pronouncing. That's <laughs> okay, that's okay. Good. So like one some give me is that kind of stuff. Uh, so some people are actually trying to a charge so like the give me is actually charges 0.005 is that kind of stuff <laughs> next uh, next is like so you guys mentioned like pretty much everybody has gitcoin uh sorry github and uh, who do not know gitcoin oh great oh one person so two people okay uh, three you know billy <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, so Gitcoin is a bounty system tied into the GitHub that like, if there are uh, GitHub issues and if you want someone to work on it, you can put a bounty on it. And uh, once you solve the problem, uh, you get whatever the uh, bounty, sometimes like a ETH, sometimes like a, a DAI. And the one thing they released, uh, I think several months ago, I think, is the integration with the ENS that uh, basically I think their sign-in is tied in with the GitHub. So like it, you would have the same login as uh, your GitHub address uh, account. So like in my case, Makoto is my GitHub account. So you would have like a Makoto. And what they do is like uh, if you do the single sign-on uh, via GitHub, and they give you uh, makoto.gitcoin.eth. And I think in their case, they may pay for the gas. Uh, I, yeah. So you could get away getting the ENS name even if you have no gas. Give a try. Uh, but you can't do all the exercise afterward because that requires gas, right? Uh, next. And it takes some time. Yeah. <coughs> this is a couple of screenshots. And yeah. So he is a proud owner of the, his Gitcoin ETH. Yeah. yeah. So this is also to suggest that if you have dApps, you can give subdomains of your dApp to your users. <laughs> There is the ENS uh, hands-on for dApps on, huh? the workshop for uh, dApp developers that will teach you how to do a lot oh, of yeah. these uh, things. How many of you are interested in including this kind of process into your dApp? Okay, so you guys kind of came to the wrong <laughs> session. <laughs> that, like, there's another set, but like, it's good. Like, you set the foundation now, yeah, leveled up. 
then you go to the next session, which is on a Thursday. S uh, yeah, and uh, that time, uh, me and uh, uh, Jeff Lau will be uh, presenting how to do that. Okay. And sorry. Thursday at 10 a.m. and it's called the uh, ENS uh, uh, Hands-On Integration yes. Workshop for Developers. Bookmark okay. now, yeah, if you and have the guide. Status. Okay, so yeah, the third case status is, I just, yeah, so they did integrate very new, like last week or something, like, uh, so that if you create an account, uh, there's a section called uh, ENS name, so if you press that, uh, it asks you, whether which like so they have a state of us. I think status was too short or it's got squatted or I don't know, but state of us sounds good too. Uh, if so like you can basically search whether that name is available and if it's good, uh, yeah, you he ask you to get to the profile, then if you press and the uh, oh sorry, yeah, then it licks you to create. Uh I think if I, rem as long as I remember, you you have to stake 10 SNT for one year. Yeah, yeah, sorry? Yeah, to release. For people? Is that what they say? No, no, huh? you need to stake 10 SNT. Yeah, but did they say they're gonna give you SNT? Yeah, yeah so like uh, if you, does anyone have SNT? <laughs> okay. Oh, SNT for everybody. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but I don't know how to send to the address. But like during the so after I go explain all this of this, I will stop for like five ten minutes to do that so that everybody have the ENS uh, address stage. If you want to. If you have nothing and if you want to download a, a status, now now is the time to go to the Google Play or somewhere and they start downloading. But yeah, so if you want to go for this mobile uh, yeah, route, there is SNT for you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so there's a, yeah, support. SNT, uh, sorry, status <laughs> people here, so we can help. Okay, so yeah, so once you went through, you want to make sure that you actually got it, right? So where else can you see? Is first place, uh, easier one is uh, ESA scan. So ESA scan usually, uh, how many, who hasn't accessed ESA scan before? Two people, three people? Okay, so ESA scan is a place where it has all the information about like you know blockchain activities where you can find the transaction who sent to who, and usually uh, probably you copy and paste uh, Ethereum address. But now you can search with it. So if you put my token dot ETH, and it goes to the if you look at the uh, URL uh, point, yeah, it's now doing yes. Look up Q my token dot ETH, and the next ah sorry go one back yeah, and this one says the ENS name address. For this one is under this one, so like you can see the information who owns it. Next, please. And uh, this is in the case of MetaMask that instead of again copy and paste the same address, you can look up my token here and uh, it basically uh, replace with the same address. This is one of the very first uh, basic uses to give convenience to send to a name instead of an address, and some wallets. Uh, already resolved, transform then the name into the hash of the address that it points to. Okay. And uh, yeah, same thing for my crypto. Uh, yes, same logic. No brainer. <laughs> okay. Next. Yeah, so who have no clue how to get subdomain? Raise your hands. Who okay. doesn't? Know yeah. how to get a subdomain? Okay, so for these people, all the people the around you knows how to get it, so they can help you. <laughs> That's great. Uh, so shall we just spend five ten minutes? Good. Okay. Do it. So the the three to remind people the three or the two versions that you can try now three versions that you can get, try now to get a subdomain is either with status you go down and download status 
or with Gitcoin, if you have a GitHub account and you want to get your subdomain with Gitcoin, or you can go on now.ens domains and you look for, for a domain there. If you have a MetaMask or a wallet that has, uh, that has Ether. So we're doing it. Everybody has a domain already? Not too often. <laughs> yeah, they're not moving. <laughs> yeah. Start doing a well, chat or well, if there's any question, well, like, you know. Yeah, question there. I'll just go around with the room. Oh, OK, yeah. yeah. A question there, yes. Sorry, sorry. Speak, speak up. Was there a domain um, around 12 days ago? But I didn't register it, uh, you know, or I didn't uh, claim it. Uh, is it just gone? Okay, so <laughs> you got a domain, but you didn't register it. You didn't claim it. So yeah, there's a lot of you probably didn't get. You probably want to answer to that. Uh, did you reveal your bid? Okay, if you bid but you didn't reveal, uh, then you've lost your bid, I'm afraid, if the bidding period is over. If you revealed but you haven't finalised the auction, then that's fine. You can wait as long as you want and, and you'll still have it. So the thing to do would be to check the name in Etherscan, see what it says about the name, whether there was a reveal, and then you'll know what state you're in. And it goes back to being available? So. Okay. It's uh, confusing for people. Any other questions? Anybody? Yes? Troubleshooting. Yeah, yeah, sure. We are here for helping you. And then, by solve. the way, yeah, help it. And then, by the way, who already have ENS ad names? And then I can give you the you sticker. <laughs> and then you can write down names. And the yes. Where do we start? A common question. Either one of these three things. Uh, there is a uh, probably gitcoin.co slash ENS. Try that one. There should be Your somewhere. ENS name. <laughs> you have one? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So okay, so it's gitcoin.co okay, slash ENS. We can probably put that up. Is there a particular how to for following the MetaMask instructions to register the? Domain? We are currently on the process of redesigning the whole uh, uh, manager, and hopefully you don't need instructions, which is good design. And but uh, the 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 final manager is not uh, out yet. Uh, we are releasing in little bits bits. So if I if I want an e a dot eth domain tonight, I can't get it until the yeah. You 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 can go tonight to get a dot eth domain. The suggested versions right now are either through my Ether wallet. It has a, a process that works. My crypto had it too. It's very similar. Or on mobile, I am token is a good process as well. There are also other services who help you or help users buy a subdomain. They are a centralized solution so that you simply put and pay with a credit card, and they take care of everything. If you want, that's enslisting.com, uh, I think. Uh, Makoto, you want them? They have a question there? No, OK, uh, you were. Any other people here? Yes. So uh, on the status? Yes. And it's saying, please connect to Ethereum. To continue. Do you have a network connection? OK. Uh, please connect to Ethereum to continue. But this is on a website, or is this status app? Status. The status app. Any guys from status here? Cool. The, can you uh, help him onboard you, onboard him? Uh, go down there. There's a status group, people trying to onboard on status. There is a group of uh, status people down there. Any other questions? Doubts? Yes? Sir? Let me come over here. <laughs> uh, uh, On MetaMask. Yes. OK. How, where, how did you get to that point? Uh, because everything was uh, 
was advised by a previous. Uh, <laughs> ok, on peut faire en français si vous ah voulez. Ah bon, bah, voilà. Non, non, mais, mais en, en fait, j'ai dû euh, refaire parce que euh, l'informatique chez nous avait tué mon, mon précédent account. Ah, ok, donc vous avez zéro bah, faire oui. et alors voilà. vous ne pouvez et pas l'enregistrer. Donc on ne peut pas l'enregistrer. Avec zéro ouais, vous pouvez achète. aller sur uh, Gitcoin ah, ou Status. Mais je te donne des... Ah d'accord. So, if you... Oh, oh, Makoto. Non. Makoto. Je vais te donner... So... <laughs> Uh, if you don't have Ether on your MetaMask or on your wallet, whatever, please either go on gitcoin.co slash ENS or on Status, uh, the, the app, and the group down there will help you uh, either give you the 10 SNTs that they ask for, uh, for registration. They are giving it for free, and also Gitcoin today is giving it for free. Okay, they are paying all your gas so that you get a subdomain. Your user gets a subdomain. You are onboarded onto their platform. But you're paying the gas with the SNT. Okay, just the SNT. Okay, so that's uh, one step. As you see, there are different ways of doing it. Uh, some apps, or if you use the universal logins or the meta transactions, there is going to be patterns whereas companies pay for the gas and for everything to simplify. There is another wallet that you can try is argent.im, okay? Argent. If you go on the, on the, I've tried it this morning, it worked very well. So right now, the, you can reserve your subdomain on this wallet that doesn't ask you for any gas or anything. Yes. Any um, how are you going to, to set up the price for the... Uh, okay, that's a question for Nick. How are we going to set up the price for the, for the new domains? Uh, so our goal is to uh, set it at a price that makes broad-based spamming and, and so forth ineffective, but still makes it cheap. And we think that a reasonable level for that is similar to existing DNS domains, so $10 a year. Um, and that's the sort of target price we're aiming for. Keep one and then go around. Other questions? Yes. Uh, Sheldon? Yeah. You say during the presentation that uh, longer names will be we can buy instantly. What will be the auction process for a smaller name? If I want a five-letter name in May, what do I do? So uh, before May, we'll have a one-off auction for shorter names, uh, and it will be similar to the existing process with a bid and reveal, but it will be over a much longer period. So you'll have a, perhaps a full month to do the bid and reveal. Uh, and after that one-off, then everything moves to the, the uh, rent-based registrar, and any unregistered name shorter than six characters or longer, uh, you can buy instantly just using that. Yes, even short ones, as long as they're not already owned, of course. And the, and the one-off process, like with one more section, when will you start that? Uh, when or why? When. When, uh, when we first launched the registrar, it's always been a limitation of no more than no fewer than seven characters. Uh, the, the goal was just to give us time to grow in popularity and awareness before uh, people just you know swept up and, sh and squatted all those short names. Um, so we do have one other way to get uh, an ENS domain today. Uh, although if you do so, it may take a, a, it'll be a couple of days before you can use it at least. Uh, MMX, the people behind Lux, have offered up 500 free .lux domains uh, to the first 500 people to email them at that address with the subject DevCon and the name that you'd like to register. Um, once this is launched on November 5th, it will be fully ENS integrated, so you'll be able to just type in your, uh, enter your e um, Ethereum address in the registrar field and it will uh, instantly associate it with your address. Uh, so I'd still suggest using status or um, Gitcoin or ENS now today, but uh, if you want a permanent one, then there's your option. Okay. Yes. So now it's only next 10 minutes left, so we'll just go through. I assume you already got the uh, domain. So how many people got uh, ENS domain today? One, two, three, four, five people? Congratulations. So now, whether you have it or not, uh, we'll quickly go through how you use a uh, new manager to manage a couple of things. Uh, 
you need to manage. Uh, okay. I think. Okay. okay. I was Belcham was going to go through, but he's. Yeah, do you want to go now? Or? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, we we can go. Uh, we show that uh, also. There's someone who managed to get the Gitcoin domain and was wondering how do you then, what do you do with that uh, domain right now? You can first see it and verify it in Ethoscan, in our manager, and uh, you can send to it or you can give it out to send uh, payouts or whatever, etc. So right now, what you can do with a manager, you can search for names, okay, and subdomains. You can display all the data about, or most of the data about the domain, who the owner is, what a resolver is, uh, what the address it's pointing to. And uh, there was a question about what is a resolver? Do you understand, does everybody understand what a resolver is? Or who doesn't understand what a resolver is? Okay, so this is a, an important piece. Uh, ENS has three parts. One is the registry, like the database where we have names points to this other thing, which is a resolver. A resolver is another smart contract that uh, has the list of things to which it points to. Okay, so this name points to this address, this wallet, this contract. And another use case is you can store an, uh, an IPFS hash. You can point to an IPFS hash. So in a future day, hopefully browser or MetaMask can resolve or translate uh, like uh, myname.eth or whatever into a website that is stored on IPFS, so decentralized. And this piece is done by the resolver. It's the translator. You can help yourself to understand it like that. You can, in the manager, list subdomains that you own and you can manage your own domain, like transfer it to somebody else, uh, add it, et cetera, et cetera. And this is the current manager beta, as you can see. It's not finished. You have a universal search. And here you can search either for the name. And in the future, you can also search for the address. So if you know your address and you want to see the domains, you will put, just put there the address. And it will do the reverse resolving. OK, Re resolution. And the manager looks very simple at the beginning. So you have your name, for example. And it tells you the owner, the address that owns this domain, until what date, or the opposite. This is the day in which it was re registered. The resolver, this other smart contract that contains what we call the pointers. OK, like you call them here. In DNS context, you call these records, you know, like the MX record, the A record, et cetera, where you point to a hosting service, et cetera. In ENS, you have a pointer. So this name points to this address. If I put firefly.eth in MetaMask, it will resolve, it will translate into this. OK? And next one, please. Thank you. And you can see, if you switch the button on subdomains, you can see the list of subdomains this domain has, OK? So firefly.eth has created these and many more uh, subdomains. Some of these subdomains will not appear, might not appear when you search for them, because they are complicated uh, names that uh, our system cannot find or translate for you. So you need to input it or search it by hand, in which case we will be able to list it for you. There's a longer explanation of what it, why that is, but uh, I can explain it later if you want. And please go next one. And this one, you want to say something? So very quickly, the important steps, you need to set, uh, w when you go back to details, you have the same thing. You have the resolver and the address. And these are the two things that after you have a domain, you need to set. Okay, Gitcoin does this for you. Status does this for you. And so uh, try the next one. You, I probably click on the tiny button. Uh, next, please. Yes, I, I click on the edit, and I, for example, can point it to a different address. So I now have my token .es, I can point it to a different address instead of, uh, of this one. So my name stays the same. I, I still give this out, but I point it to whichever thing I want, address or wallet. Next one, please. I can, uh, this is how you send the transaction with MetaMask. If, when you confirm, thank you. Next one. 
uh, you can, this is, uh, you add a subdomain, okay? This is a way to, for you to, sub, uh, to add a subdomain. You pick a name, next one, thank you. And you execute the transaction, and when it's executed, thank you, next one. You see the subdomain, okay? It goes back to the details of this subdomain. Each of these are called nodes, or is a domain, okay? And you can set the resolver. So these are the smart contract that helps translate. And you, if you're developers, you can develop custom resolvers. You will learn a bit of this probably in the, uh, the um, hands-on integration workshop. But f everybody can use the default public resolver, which simply gives you a set of pre-translatable pointers, if you want. You can uh, point it to an address, or a, which is a wallet or a contract. You can point it to an IPFS hash. You can have a text file, uh, a text field, and, uh, and other things. Please, next one. You send a transaction. Save, again, next. And finally, the resolver has been set. You need to point it to someone, to something, otherwise it's not usable yet. So this resolver can point it to an address, and, and content is the IPFS hash, OK? You can point it to a, an IPFS or swarm hash as well, right? And uh, in this case, we point it to an address. Go next one. Uh, it's, uh, well, we're sending a transaction empty, but go ahead. <laughs> and that's it. So this is the basic things that you have to do with the INS. You get a name or a subdomain. You set the resolver. Inside, when the resolver is set, you set the pointer or record, if it's easier for you to understand with DNS language, that points to a wallet, for example. These three steps uh, after you own a domain, OK? And uh, well, we talked about this already. But any questions in the meantime? Or do you want to say something? What's the Luxy extension? Is it for Luxembourg or? Lux, like luxury. Oh, okay. Luxury, yes? Let you exchange easily. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> so is it going on? Uh, no, I'm just going to answer the answer. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, Essentially, we're just taking one of these standard CLDs, the working IPS. Okay. And so the dot lux, oh, sorry. So the dot, the dot lux is repurposed to let you exchange easily. Okay. And the objective for us is to bring that standard DNS naming conven convention into the blockchain community. So we've worked with Nick to integrate this. And so our registrars, you can actually just uh, paste the wallet address in with your domain name, and it'll actually propagate onto the blockchain and work anywhere that ENS works today. And, and so I'll just remind you guys, the first 500 people that email marketing at mmx.co will get a free .lux domain name. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? And this, uh, this uh, gives us way to reminding you that .eth is the current namespace, but already you can buy .lux and .xyz domain. And in the future, hopefully, the whole community and all the TLDs will be integrated into the system. And so if you own a .com domain, you can have the same subdomaining system uh, for that domain. And, and, and also the main domain can point to whatever decentralized address or IPFS hash that you want, will want in the future. Questions? Who managed to get a subdomain here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, come on, 10. One more. Give me 10. <laughs> yeah, nine. Yay! 10. OK, good. <laughs> Can we make a subdomain of a subdomain? Yes, ad infinitum. You can make sub of sub of sub of subs. Uh, you can imagine your own things. The only thing is that for each node or each subdomain, you need to set the resolver and maybe set a pointer. So it's two transactions for that, unless you create a custom resolver that maybe does everything for you already. I don't know. Yeah? I have a question for the subdomain, the owner, so you can transfer ownership for the subdomain. Very good one. Transfer the owner afterward of the domain. What will happen to the subdomain? Very good question. So there are what happens to the subdomains and the owner of the subdomain if you transfer the main domain, the parent domain. So uh, you still own. You are still appear as the owner of the subdomain, 
but the owner of the parent has the power to take it away from you, to change the owner, unless there is a special registrar, uh, right? <laughs> you want to get... <laughs> so, uh, as Beltran says, the owner of a domain can always change the ownership of any of the subdomains. Uh, so, you should really only register a subdomain of a domain if you trust the run running it. And one way to trust the one running it is that the one running it is actually a contract. So you can have domains that are owned by contracts and they can enforce rules about how domain subdomains are created and redistributed and so on. And that's basically what now.ens.domains is doing. It's what Gitcoin are doing. Uh, if you look at the source of that, you can see that they have no mechanism to take your name off you, basically. So it's uh, trustless and they will not be able. So you need to trust or... Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> so uh, for the transition to the, the new registrar, then uh, in a year, a year after the transition, that domain will go away and anyone can grab it. And that's why we're uh, making it ex you know, an extended period and, and making people very aware of this. However, once we've moved to the permanent registrar, uh, the goal is that uh, to prevent this sort of tragedy of the commoners issue, anyone can, re -reg can extend the registration on a domain, even if it doesn't belong to you. So time is up. Uh, final question? No? Okay, so this is it. Uh, thank you very much for coming. And uh, yeah, uh, great. So now it's your time to put on the sticker and then like show ENS like crazy. Yes? What are the requirements for the workshop? For the hands on integration workshop? Uh, are you a developer? That you're a developer? That's it. That's it. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you very thank much. You.